going to do a couple more, but I think I should only go for like 20 minutes more. I've been told to generally limit these to about a half an hour. So, um, Jim, you're the tallest man in the room. In 20 minutes, will you stand up and wave your arms really like this? That'd be, I, I'd really appreciate it. Okay, I, I did see a lot of films in uh, the Twin Cities, and I did a lot of experimenting, immersing myself into different experiences. Um, so for one week, I went to this phenomenon that's called the Cinema Grill. Are there any of those here in town where they serve food during the movie in the theater? Well, it's a good thing there aren't, as, you, as you'll hear when I, when I read this. Um, it's an interesting phenomenon, and I don't know whether it's very really good, but I did have one good experience, so I'm going to read this one quickly. Ah, what a country we live in. In the old days, we had to go to a snack counter to bring armloads of artery-stiffening snacks into the theater and spill them all over ourselves. Nowadays, we can sit in cushy swivel chairs and order up all manner of meaty sandwiches, ultimate nachos, and deep-fried versions of virtually any processed food. God bless America. <laughs> yes, all over this great country of ours, cinema grills are sprouting up like genetically engineered crops treated with pre-emergent herbicides. From Seattle to Winter Park, from Fort Wayne to Raleigh-Durham, serving off-release movies and food ranging in quality from decent to downright suspect. And in the Twin Cities, home to four such, the cinema grill seems like a brilliant scheme. Seems like it, but it ain't. In three of these venues, I had a perfectly unpleasant experience. Only once did I emerge brimming with hope and without intestinal gas. Carefully planned and executed, the notion of a cinema grill is an invitation to a very pleasant night out for dinner and a movie. But in general, it's a place where volume is high, quality is low, and people don't seem to care. Why? Because we are a massive people. Good God, but we're fat. Minnesota <laughs> itself is one of the fattest states in what is officially the fattest country in the world. We've even beaten out the biscuits and gravy-loving South, in part because our winters last 13 months, and in some long spells, we don't get out of our snow pants for an entire decade. <laughs> People here often look like walking sausages, particularly in the early summer when the skin reappears all veined and bloated and pink. It's enough to put you off your lunch. Our nation is getting fatter for the same reason we're getting dumber. Our expectations have slammed through the floor of the sub-basement and lie somewhere beneath the Earth's crust. A full belly is more important than a stimulated palate. A two-hour dispensation from thought is preferred over any sort of mind play. And Minnesotans don't seem to know what good food is. Only the rural English have stupider palates. <laughs> With the exception of the cosmopolitan Twin Cities, you can't get a good meal anywhere, unless you like overdone beef, soggy steam table vegetables, batter fried cod, and pudding. Another factor is this keen sense of denial. Now, you can't get away with calling macaroni and cheese pasta anywhere else in the world. <laughs> Bacon is not a food group. <laughs> Now, Wednesday is all-you-can-eat night at the Yorktown Cinema Grill in Edina, Minnesota, and the joint is jumping for the 7 o'clock show. Now, if you're from Minnesota, you can eat one hell of a lot. Second to the Minnesotans' love of coupons is the love of the all-you-can-eat option at restaurants and those bulk feeding stations we euphemistically call buffets. <laughs> um, in fact, I can safely surmise that it was for our benefit that the term all-you-can-eat slowly has been modified to all-you-care-to-eat. <laughs> Distinction is critical making the phrase more of an invitation to have your fill than a challenge to tuck it away like a French goose until your liver explodes. <laughs> but we're not alone. Thanks to the Cinema Grill, this combination of middling second-run movies and sub-prison quality food is all the rage across the country. Menus abound with several varieties of sandwiches, pizzas, and the entire deep-fried pantheon. Now here's one such menu from another theater, exactly as printed, of the ultimate nachos. Tortilla chips, toped, T-O-P-E-D, with your choice of beef, chicken, or plain. Covered with Monterey Jack cheese, lettuce, tomatoes, possessive, onions, black olives, with jalapenos and salsa on the side. Ultimate nachos tend to appear everywhere, and once again I'm reminded that nobody knows what the word ultimate means, or it wouldn't be on the menu. Ultimate, even broadly defined, means last, final, altogether remote in the universe. That's not how I like to think of my nachos. I don't want to look at a massive plate of corn chips, toped as they are with beef, chicken, or plain, <laughs> thinking they may be my last nachos. I don't want them to be my first nachos either. I simply don't want them to be my nachos in any sense. <laughs> and the movies? All of them are well out of major release. Some are so far off release, they might as well star Lily and Gish. Which is not to say they're the cream of Hollywood either. Among the vertical limit, what women want, the family man and the emperor's new groove, I chose the emperor's new groove because it was the only one that didn't feature a tanned, meaty Hollywood regular. <laughs> On the weekend, I made, oh, I'm sorry, ooh. the seating is much like the lobby bar at any airport Marriott, so it looks comfortable without actually being comfortable. <laughs> I ordered a turkey sandwich and fries, which about an hour into the film were loudly served to me by my waiter as I watched this latest Disney-mation offering. 
It was lightweight and goofy, which is the opposite of the food I had. <laughs> never, never before had I known a turkey sandwich to be heavy and serious. <laughs> On the weekend, I made the mistake of attending a matinee at the Cinema Cafe in New Hope, Minnesota, without inviting any children. Bring this food and movie concept to kids, and the result is a Chuck E. Cheese without enough entertainment to hold the kids' attention. All children younger than 10 under the influence of soda pop behave like baboons in the wild. They run, hands over their heads, generally saying the same thing. You've heard this, haven't you? Those are children, come on, back me up here. Let's see, where was it? Oh, there it is, okay. Uh, a small boy runs to my table, spreading the baboon call, holding his half-gallon cup of Tahitian treat before him like a sacrament, <laughs> slamming it into the edge of my table and sending a spray of fruit flavor in five directions. This barely slows him down. He casts me an odd glance, as I'm the only childless adult in the room, then turns his lower primate behavior back towards his home table. He has not been missed. The lights go down a little. The neon and fluorescent wash remains high, so the screen is never quite bright enough. I get the feeling this is what a lot of these families do at home, eat pizza while the television blares, only here they don't have to clean, after, clean up after themselves. The movie begins, 102 Dalmatians. The food arrives, pizzas everywhere. Kids gorge themselves and attain that middle distance stare cultivated by regular TV watching. For precious minutes, the place is silent. Too bad the damn film isn't dull, is too dull to hold the kids' attention. Now fueled by more soda pop and pizza, the primate din begins anew, and children are everywhere, impulsively escaping their parents' authority and careening around in the sickly half-dark like roller derby queens. <laughs> All of this is to preface, to preface my delight in one particular cinema grill, the Suburban World Theater, which I'll tell you is now closed, damn it. <laughs> well, the suburban world is oddly situated in the perfectly urban uptown section of Minneapolis, and it could easily have been one of my favorite theaters in town. It's a single screen, one of the last in the whole metropolitan area. The interior decor has been preserved and restored in a sort of Mediterranean style, with fake porticos festooned with fake greenery behind which soft pastel lights glow. In the dark, the effect is actually quite nice and gives the theater a feeling of great space. Dozens of tiny lights in the ceiling sparkle like stars through the screen, accented by the old-fashioned, slowly rotating transparency projection of lofty moonlit clouds. The whole effect is intended to put the audience in a lush courtyard of the villa, perhaps on the Amalfi Coast, <laughs> on a perfect summer evening after several, several limoncellos. Of course, it doesn't work, but it's a nice try. And the fact that anything so architecturally evocative still exists in the era of black box stadium seating death holes is extremely heartening. <laughs> seating is arranged in tiers like terraces, with tables and chairs bunched close, but not New York close. Remember what I said about Minnesotans? We tend to take up a lot of room. <laughs> Quiet, efficient waitstaff float in and out like Hamlet's dad, never seeming to get in the way. <laughs> <laughs> while refills of ale and steaming plates of pasta, grilled fish, and light crusty pizza appear like magic. On this visit to the suburban world, the feature was Billy, Ma Billy Ab Elliot, excuse me, a movie I quite liked, and he liked even more while drinking a freshly tapped Newcastle brown ale and munching on a Maryland cra blue crab cake that was actually nicely done. In fact, the whole menu was a cut above, as was the service, which is probably why it gets sold out so often. The thought that a theater serves a decent wine or an excellent beer while showing an eclectic and consistently good array of off-release and re-release films is enough to keep me coming back. But right then, sitting back in my comfy chair, sipping the froth off my Nuki Brown, nibbling the last of my crab cake, thrilling as skinny little Billy dances madly with passion, anger, and heart, I looked up at the theatrical night sky and felt, yes, this is right. This is what a cinema grill should be, a tiny two-hour vacation that fills my heart without the risk of heartburn. And there's that.